Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to be doing a video about a very, a very common problem that women experience, which is finding a man and getting into a dynamic where she has to hold space for him, which is never the way that it should be, right? When I'm talking about holding space in this context, I'm talking about a man who is complaining, you know, about his day, he's venting to her. It could be about her as well, right? Like that energy of, it's like he's putting his problems, putting his, his negative feelings onto her. And she is like a sounding board for him. So it's not even healthy holding space, right? Like it, when, when we teach men how to hold space for a woman, we're going to be teaching, we, we teach men how to lovingly correct the way that she's communicating so that she's not venting so that she's not just throwing her her problems at him so that she's not blaming and judging because all of that is irresponsible right it's irresponsible when a woman does it and it's irresponsible of course when a man does it and and it's so much worse though so much worse when a man is doing that to a woman, when he's venting, when he's blaming, when he's complaining, he's talking about his day, he's talking about his, his, uh, how horrible his day at work was, how terrible his boss was to him, how many problems he has, the issues that he has with his bills, um, you know, the problems he's going through <laughs> emotionally, like mentally, whatever it is, his depression, all that kind of stuff. And women can deal with this early on, right? Like I have a lot of clients who I do calls with where it's like, this is what they deal with even on a first date or a second date or a third date. Uh, not necessarily that extent of it, but a man who's basically complaining, who's opening up to her about his problems in some kind of way. And now she's the space holder. She is the one that is holding space for him that is letting him share all of that stuff and giving some kind of comfort, whether that's just attention, whether that's reassurance or whether that's advice or whatever it is. And of course, that's going to make a woman feel typically quite masculine, right? You know, more shut down, closed off, drained, uh, and not attracted, and <laughs> not attracted to a man when he does that. The man is basically getting into, I'm going to call it the child role, right? Um, where, and, and she's the mother, right? She is the mother in that dynamic. And she feels like a mother. And does a mother feel attracted to her children? Typically not. Thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> but in the dynamic with the man, she's going to lose that attraction for him as well and be drained whenever that's happening. And women get stuck in this. They get stuck in this dynamic because, you know, most women, they're, they're, they're good people and they, they want to be kind and they don't want to hurt a man's feelings. And, um, you know, they don't want to shut him down and, and like make him feel bad. And they also don't want to make him, you know, emotionally reactive and angry and abandon her and, I'll make her feel like she's a bad person and then she's going to feel guilty and feel all this shame and all this stuff. So what a lot of women do is they tolerate. They just tolerate this happening, even though it doesn't feel good for them. Now, if you're that type of woman, you've experienced that before, you're currently experiencing that, you need to join our Plarity Masterclass, PlarityMasterclass.com, where we'll teach you how to communicate to, to break out of um, these patterns so you don't have to experience it anymore. We're not going to talk about that too much, at least right now. What I do want to go further into, though, is why this is happening in the first place. Now, of course, a woman is going to have a lot of wounds that causes her to enable this behavior. And that's what it is, right? It's enabling. It's enabling behavior that really shouldn't be happening on a date or in a relationship. A man should never be communicating with his woman this way. In my relationship, my marriage, I don't talk about my problems with my wife. Um, now, I'm, I might bring it up just as an interesting topic of conversation at, at, at times, but it's never, and it's usually not a topic in conversation. I deal with my own problems, but it's never from a place of 
I want you to hear me. I need you to hear me. Um, I need space held for me. And certainly not, I need you to solve this problem. I need you to give me advice. I need you to give me reassurance. I don't, I, I, I don't use my wife in that way. I don't need her for that. Um, I want her to open up to me so that I can help her with her problems, so that I can help her with her feelings, so I can hold space for her feelings, right? That's the, the healthy polarized dynamic that's supposed to exist between a man and woman, where, and it's going to feel good for both when a woman knows how to communicate in a way where a man wants to hold space. Again, Polarity Masterclass, so that you can learn that if you if you haven't taken our Masterclass yet. Otherwise, you'll just be venting or blaming or, you know, energetically penetrating a man. It's not going to feel good for him. And then he's not going to want to hold space for you. He's going to go want to go to his man cave and play video games or do it, literally anything else. But one of the things that was really interesting for me thinking about this is with my daughter. Right. So we've got uh, my, our daughter is 18 months old. Oh, my God. She's she's like right on the <laughs> the far end of the spectrum of like, you know, the strong willed child, she's going to be, she's so much fun. She's going to continue to be so much fun, especially helping her let go and learn feminine language, learn feminine communication. Um, it's going to be very interesting. So anyway, she's also in a stage right now where, and it's happened, started in the last few weeks where just like these massive meltdowns when she doesn't get what she wants, this crying and just Total meltdown, right? Total um, temper tantrum type stuff. It's really funny. And what's interesting, you know, the difference with men and women. Now, of course, I can fully, you know, just, I, and I often do, just hold her and love her and, you know, it's okay. You know, feel whatever you need to feel. It's all good. Um, or redirect her to, to something that's going to be distracting her and it's going to be fun for her or whatever. It depends on the situation. But what's interesting is, understand women are yeah she's my daughter's absolutely gorgeous inside and out um women are their programming right so much of their programming is about being able to be a mother it's about being able to nurture it's about being able to follow the we'll call it follow the child right follow the child obviously a woman uh, with really young children needs to be able to set boundaries and stuff as well it's about being able to be whatever a child needs, right? That's much more challenging for men, especially when their masculine instinct is really online, right? Like I will take time every day with my with my daughter. Um, we'll go to the park or I'll do stuff with her when, when my wife is cooking and she's a total monster. Um, but my... Even though like I've developed so much patience and whatever from all my self-development and and leading my wife to my patience is going to it, it is exhaustible, right? Because men are not designed to mother young children. I think we can do it, but we're not designed for it. Our programming is not designed for that. And so we're going to be more limited in how much we can tolerate. We're just like, okay, I want to throw this child out the window now. And now women can get to that point too, right? Especially emotionally unhealthy women, their, their um, fuse is going to be shorter. But it's like they have a, a, a tolerance for it because they're programmed to be what they need to be for that child. Because otherwise, we'd have a lot of dead children if women were not capable of doing that, right? So obviously their programming is going to conform to that. And, and children can be super needy and they can do all this, uh, you know, lots of yelling and temper tantrums and what the hell do you want? I have no idea. <laughs> it's just, it, it, and it can be endless, especially at that really young age, you know, 18 months, there, there's a lot of that because they don't even have a language yet. And so here's the point of this. It, it really got me thinking is, you know, women get into these dynamics with men that are very similar because there's they still have the mentality of a child. Like they haven't grown up into their masculine instinct, into that sense of responsibility of like, I'm going to be handling my problems. They weren't properly fathered. They probably weren't properly mothered either. And, uh, you know, that's just the way it is in our society. And so 
women get into these dynamics and because they have this programming for taking care of a baby they're just like i you know i'm just going to i'm just going to like be what this child needs be what this toddler needs whatever that is um which is hell i mean obviously again the boundaries and stuff you need as well but overall it's healthy because that's how a child is going to develop is to to be able to have that space to cry and all that kind of stuff um and then that programming gets hijacked when a man acts like a baby okay it gets hijacked where a woman falls into the same pattern of, okay, I will be kind of whatever you need. What she really needs is a man whose instincts are fully online, who leads her, who takes care of her, who holds space for her, who energetically penetrates her, who provides a container for her, for the relationship, um, who's fully in integrity, who's just taking care of her. Because a woman needs to be taken care of so that she can take care of herself and children, especially, right? Like as a mother, <laughs> it's it's hard enough as a single woman, or sorry, as a woman without children, but when you've got children, you really need that support. You really need to be taken care of because you're being drained all day by actual children. And the last thing that you need is to be drained by a man child who's acting like a child as well right but because that programming kind of gets hijacked especially you know it, it's going to be most extreme when a woman is also has wounds from childhood right like if she had to take care of her parents or if she was it, taking care of them emotionally because they got their own emotional pro problems or if she wasn't uh, led into her self-worth or maintained that self-worth um, you know she she wasn't her needs weren't met in childhood and then she has to try to make up for it because deep down she doesn't believe that she has self-worth so how is she going to make up for it well by stepping into that mother role and doing things holding space reassuring helping solve problems all that stuff so that kind of instinct of taking care of a child gets hijacked with a man and then she just lets it happen. She just lets it happen, right? Men aren't going to let that happen if their instincts are online, right? If, like if a woman is acting out, you know, a lot of modern men today, they will tolerate it because their instincts are so buried. Their, their instincts are so offline today because they're taught that their masculinity is wrong and ever, it's all toxic and, and even from childhood get, that, that gets buried. Um, but if a man's instinct is online, He's not going to tolerate that. He's going to find it infuriating when a woman is acting out in an unhealthy way and demanding things from him and all of that kind of stuff, acting like a toddler, <laughs> right? Because a woman, like, to be fair, women can often think that this polarity thing, it's like, oh, well, I'm in the kid role. Uh, yeah, you're, you're following the man. Absolutely, you're following the man. And so is a child. But the dynamic is so different with a healthy woman because. A child is going to be a huge, if a woman was actually acting like a child, she's going to be a massive burden on a man, right? That's not going to be fun for a man. That's not going to be inspiring for a man. That's going to be incredibly draining. The healthy feminine woman is like the, we'll call it the pinnacle of being the, the great follower. Children are not nearly at that pinnacle. They, they don't have the uh, communication for it. They don't have the language for it. They don't have the self-worth for it. Um, they they're either compliant which is unhealthy or they're demanding like my child right now uh and 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 so it's a, it is a different dynamic that a, whim, a woman is shifting into and again if you act like a toddler as a woman another reason you need the polarity masterclass polaritymasterclass.com because you're just going to drain the hell out of your man and he's not going to want to take care of you and it's just it doesn't work that way for a man to want to take care of a woman she needs to be fully in her feminine energy. She needs to learn feminine communication to communicate her problems and, and feelings and, and needs in a way that actually inspires him, actually inspires him to step up. Oh, Rachel's got a question. Uh, oh, it's a good question. I'm going to answer that in a few minutes, Rachel. Um, but yeah, so, so getting back to my point, women will tolerate. Right? They will tolerate way more than they should because of that hijacked instinct, especially if they have the wounds because then they don't have their self-worth online 
and then they don't want to be abandoned. They don't want to be a bad person. They want to have value. And so they tolerate that. And that keeps the dynamic depolarized. And of course, those types of women are going to tend to, like if you tend to attract those kind of men, or you've attracted that kind of man, that's for a reason, right? Because a truly feminine embodied woman, you wouldn't have attracted that kind of man, or you're not, you wouldn't be attracting those types of men. I mean, sure, you would attract them into your life sometimes. It's not like you you would never experience them, but you'd be so repelled by them that you would have no interest in them, number one. And uh, and you'd also be attracting really, really healthy masculine men that would just want to take care of you. And if you're not, you know, polaritymasterclass.com, go to it and, and figure out why, because it's all about your communication. Your communication is communicating, not just, you know, the, the, the words and everything, it's communicating your self-worth at all times. It's communicating your limiting beliefs at all times. And that's going to be attracting and repelling certain types of men. So women need to shift this, right? If this has been your experience, if these are the types of men you're attracting, or you've got this type of man right now, and you notice you're kind of in that mothering role, and you don't know how to get out of it, there is a solution for that. And that is learning feminine communication. That is learning how to shift into your feminine energy, as well as, you know, there's shifting into your feminine energy, shifting into feminine communication, all of which is important. And there is another really big piece, which is just choosing, I'm not going to tolerate this anymore. I can't. And it's not even about like setting a boundary, of course, because that would be very masculine. Like, oh, I'm not, you know, don't complain to me. Don't vent to me. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. I'm not your mother, right? Because when you do that, you actually are still being his mother because you're communicating with him in a way where it's like, he's going to feel like a little boy because you're setting boundaries with him. You're reprimanding him. Um, you're, you're telling him what to do. You're telling him not, you're telling him what not to do. That's mothering still. There's a different kind of mothering. And he's not going to be inspired by that. What he's just going to feel butthurt about it and feel more like a child uh, about that. He's not going to be inspired into stepping up to be his best self for you to deal with his own problems. He's just going to be like, oh, my woman's, you know, she's so mean. And, uh, you know, she doesn't let me open up. She doesn't let me share my feelings. No, you got to you got to do your own work. Your own work is not about setting boundaries. It's but it's but it's also not about enabling. Right. You need to understand the difference. There's a subtle difference. And part of that is just really getting in touch with those feelings inside you. And it's that feeling of like it's not a feeling, but it's that sensation of I can't. I just I can't hold space for this. Oh, it just feels so bad in my body to, to hold space for this, to hold space for a man child. I can't. I can't do it anymore. I feel so bad. And you learn how to communicate that from a place of non-judgment where you're not disrespecting him and but he's getting it he understands and he actually starts to feel like oh i don't want to burden my woman with this either i don't want to treat her like a mother i want to actually step up and start cherishing her and i want to start dealing with my own problems um yeah so it's, it's very interesting with the whole toddler dynamic and 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 a woman's programming that's why women are and, and it's not just with venting and everything. It's like this compounds with the wounding with why women are so likely to tolerate this kind of stuff for years or decades uh, of things that they really shouldn't be tolerating. It's because they've, they've got that, we'll call it strength. Like it's a different kind of strength than a man's strength. Now, I don't tend to use the word strength or, or being strong to define femininity but it's like this programming to be able to tolerate this kind of nonsense right i think of my daughter my 18 month old daughter she's got a lot of nonsense right now <laughs> my and uh and a woman has to be strong enough to deal with that nonsense all day long while the man is out hunting the, the buffalo or, you know, harvesting the fields or at his modern job or his business or whatever it is so that she doesn't throw the children out the window and so that her genes can actually reproduce to the next generation. That is that is a form of strength that men typically don't have. I, I'll, I can deal with that for a few hours. If I was dealing with that all day long, yeah, that would be very difficult. 
um, <laughs> that would be very, very difficult. All right. So, uh, may and and you know most men you know like I, I again like my self improvement allows me to manage my emotions and everything i i just think there'd be so many dead children if uh if men were dealing with if, if men were raising infants from from birth to like two years old yeah there'd be a lot of dead children um that would be very tragic so that's it's one of the reasons we need women all right. May I ask a question? What if your man is in constant pain, even receives disability for his condition? May I add that I was unsure what to do when all of a sudden he leapt out of bed with extreme pain in his leg. He was almost freaking out because the pain was so severe. Our room was dark and silent as I waited for him to come back to bed. May I ask, is there a better way to deal, a uh, better way to navigate when he's in extreme pain? Well, so that I, you know, first of all, I, I, you know, I, I have compassion for that, right? That's a really difficult situation for a woman to be in because, you know, the more that a man has disabilities, the more that a man is in pain, the less that the less capacity, less can't talk today, the less capacity that he is going to have to take care of you, right? Because, and, and the more that he needs to be taken care of to some degree, right? And this can depolarize the crap out of a relationship. It can it can cause so many problems, and it and it sucks for both man and woman, right? Especially if he has if if his instincts are online, his masculine instincts, because he doesn't want to be taken care of in that way, right? He doesn't want you to be a mother. He doesn't. He wants to be able to be a, to to be fully independent and to be able to take care of you, and um, and not to feel helpless in that kind of way. It's a really sucky position for a man to be in and of course you want to be cherished you want to be taken care of you don't want to have that burden but of course you know you guys are you guys are married and there's that you can't just ditch him um you know you love him and all of that stuff i'm assuming and what becomes so important there like it, this is important no matter what but so important in your situation is to really learn feminine communication really learn the energy of letting go of control of not uh not doing anything for him unless he tells you okay? and this is a lesson that every woman whether your man's disabled or whether you have a man you're dating whatever you need to learn is don't do anything for a man unless he tells you to do it because if you do you're stepping into that mothering role now if you got a disabled man, you could still have it, you know, say I was disabled, say I lost my legs, I got cut off by a tractor tomorrow. Well, I still really want to maintain the polarity as a man. So what am I going to be doing? I'm going to, when I need it, you know, I'm going to be doing as much as I reasonably can by myself and, you know, figuring out how to move around in a wheelchair and all that stuff. But there's going to be some things that I'm going to need my wife for. And so two things I'm going to be doing as a man, number one, I'm going to be directing her when I do need something, you know, do this for me, sweetheart, go, go do this, get me whatever. And I'm going to be setting boundaries to not let her do anything for me if I didn't tell her to do it, because I don't want her getting into that anticipating energy. Anticipating is masculine, right? And, and here's where the hijacking comes in too, right? Because women do need to anticipate with their infants right? That's part of the programming. It's part of the mother programming is to be able to anticipate a child's needs, especially because a child who is under the age of two or, I mean, at some point he starts learning a language, but all they've really got is crying for a while and some basic body language stuff. So you need to learn how to anticipate. And that gets hijacked by a woman's wounds as well. And then you start anticipating everything that a man needs right and you know really masculine man is going to be like you know sweetheart don't do that don't anticipate my needs uh don't don't do anything unless i tell you to do it don't uh i, I didn't tell you to do this don't do that ideally lovingly if his heart is online too um but a lot of men today because they've got their own wounds they're not going to and some men are so wounded that they might actually enjoy it Right. They might actually enjoy a woman who's anticipating his needs. And, uh, you know, it, back to the disabled situation. Well, you know, 
a man can sort of just be like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it happen because I kind of need it, right? Because because I got my, I got my issues, I got this pain, I got this whatever. Um, but if a man is not setting those boundaries for a woman, you as a woman need to do this work to fully let go, to not anticipate needs, and to communicate. Because here's the other big problem that a lot of women get into. You got a man, you don't want to anticipate his needs, but when you don't anticipate his needs, he gets butthurt about it. And this is, this may be semi-relevant to what you're bringing up, Rachel. I don't know the details. He gets butthurt about it because it's like, oh, I need all this stuff from my woman, but but he is not secure enough in his masculinity or his instincts aren't online enough. He doesn't have the self-confidence to direct a woman to do what he wants her to do. And so if he doesn't get a woman who anticipates his needs, he starts complaining about it. And then you got to hold space for that as well. You don't want that. He starts complaining about it. And, and instead of just directing you uh, to, to do whatever he wants, it's because he lacks that confidence. And then you're left in this position of like, okay, do I anticipate, do, do I just continue to not anticipate the needs? And then my man's always complaining at me for being selfish or for not caring about me or, or caring about him or whatever. Or uh, do I, do I just start anticipating his needs? Cause then he's happier that way. And you, and the answer is you do neither of those things. There is a, not a middle ground, but there's a third option, the third secret option, which is learning feminine communication, learning how to communicate what you are feeling, what you're experiencing, what your problem is in that moment. Uh, the insecurities that are coming up for you, the, you know, learning how to communicate this to him in a way that he gets that will actually inspire him to step up and start moving through his own discomfort to give directives, tell you what to do lovingly so that you don't have to anticipate anything and he doesn't start complaining and get butthurt when you're not anticipating those needs, right? All this stuff can be solved. By learning the feminine communication and shifting the energy underneath it, right? Really moving towards feminine embodiment where you're fully letting go of control. And you're fully opening up your heart. And that's what we're going to teach you to do on our Polarity Masterclass at polaritymasterclass.com. We're going to show you this. You can actually learn this to solve these problems. Like if you're a woman who's been experiencing these problems before, or you're currently experiencing these problems, and all women have, or all women will, if they've been in, <laughs> unless they unless they've already done all this work, or, or we're just born that way, and, and we're raised in a really healthy way, and healthy, um, and and found a really healthy man. It's like the one percent of one percent of women who don't have to deal with this stuff. Everybody else, you got to do do the work, and you can't look at your man or men. And, and focus on their side of the street. You got to focus on your side of the street and shift this in yourself so that a man will reflect that. Sean says, uh, Zach Rohde, is this masterclass great for men? Oh yeah, hundred percent. It, it seems to deal with feminine communication, but it's deal with men also. My, my boyfriend would like to attend yet. Yeah, he 100% should attend. You know, you can both attend together. You can attend separately. You know, it, it depends on his interest and everything. Um, but, yeah, a lot of my videos are geared towards women. I do sometimes talk about uh, men, and so. But in our master class and in our academy program, we help both men and women. Okay, and what we're doing on the master class for men is we are showing men how to lead. We're showing men how to shift their communication. I call it masculine communication uh, to communicate in a way where. A, a woman's going to be responsive to it. She feels good in her body. She feels attraction, right? Because it's powerful communication. It's direct. It's not wishy-washy. It's not, you know, in, her, in his feelings, any of that stuff. And, um, and a lot of it is centered, a lot of what we teach men is centered around not just leading a woman on dates or to, to make him a sandwich or whatever, but the most important part is leading a woman into using feminine communication. Right. It's it's being a woman's coach, basically, but like her love coach. And that's the natural dynamic that, that should be in a polarized relationship or, or on dates where a man is taking care of his woman. He's correcting his woman lovingly. Right. All of this is lovingly. He's helping her through her resistance, through her fears and helping her shift how she communicates and how she shows up with him 
and creating this safe container for her to to do that right so absolutely men do need this uh and and you know what i you know before i became a coach and the reason i decided to be a coach is because i started i, I basically invented feminine communication as i teach it now feminine communication has been taught for many many years it's called feminine communication but it's actually everywhere that i have seen it's actually this soft and masculine communication a lot of it is it's not actually feminine because it's taught by masculinized women who don't actually know how to truly embody their feminine energy so i learned this by learning what feels good for me and my body uh with the way that my wife communicates to me because she was communicating in all these really masculine ways that i ah this is feels terrible don't want this uh and and but then sometimes she would communicate in a way where it's like "Ooh, i want to do that for you i want to take care of you i want to actually listen to your feelings right now instead of just go off and and like have nothing to do with you what's going on here why is this different and i pieced it all together and then once i understood it and of course i'm making my own shifts um at the same time once i understood it it's like okay i gotta teach her to do more of this I got to teach her to be as feminine as possible. Or I didn't, well, I did have the terms at the time, but yeah, I need to teach her to be more like this, communicate more like this, because I I want to take care of her when she does this. This is amazing. This feels so different than when she communicated that way. So that's what we're teaching men to do, except instead of you wasting, uh, sorry, instead of a man wasting years and years of his life trying to figure this out through trial and error, you can just get all the pieces and then start practicing. Um, may I share? I feel so much appreciation and gratitude for this work that you do and share. Thank you. Yeah, you're absolutely, uh, I'm really glad to hear you. Welcome. Uh, all right. So, yeah, polaritymasterclass.com. If you have not attended one of our two hour events yet, you need to attend. You're wasting time here. I don't want you to waste any more time. On this event, what we're going to do is we're not, I'm not, not going to teach you about masculine and feminine communication. I'm just, I'm going to outline everything for you and give you examples. But then the best part of the show is we're going to role play it for you. And it is totally different, a uh, different experience. And, and we'll put together so many pieces for you, right? We have so many men and women who have read my books. They've been following me for several, like basically since I started coaching read all my books or read one of my books or whatever and then they attend the master class and it's like oh my god i get it now this actually makes sense I, oh, I just felt the energy and i can see where i'm like misapplying things and how i'm still in my masculine as a woman or how i'm still like not actually stepping up to to be a man as a man because you're seeing it in action it's a completely different experience then we'll answer questions for you as well it's 47 dollars. i mean you know, anybody can scrape together $47 to, to, to see what this looks like and start applying these shifts, right? Instead of, as much as I love you, all of you watching all of my YouTube videos, you know, you're going to save a lot of time <laughs> just going to the masterclass and seeing what this is all about rather than watching dozens and dozens of hours of youtube videos i mean do both do both if you got the time but the master class is going to be such a better use of your time you're going to start to apply all this stuff because that's where we focus on all the solutions right all the solutions to all these problems that i talk about on these videos here you go this is what you need to do this is how you make these shifts may i share i've been impressed by how my husband who hasn't read your books has started mirroring your exact phrases once i started shifting into feminine communication hundred percent right why does that happen because his instincts are online right so and we've seen this time and time again from from women who attend our master classes or especially women in our academy program where they focus on their own line they're in their own lane right they focus on applying the feminine communication of making the energetic shifts in their body of letting go of control and then what happens a magical thing happens the man starts to mirror it and start starts using masculine communication without him reading a single book or a master class or doing anything. Why? Because this is instinctual. Because this is instinctual. And a woman is speaking to a man's instincts rather than a man's head. And that's why teaching a man this stuff, a woman teaching a man this stuff, it's going to go in one ear and out the other. Because 
he doesn't want to be taught by a woman. He doesn't want to be energetically penetrated by a woman. But you learn how to do this, uh, communicate your own shifts, embody your own shifts. A lot of men are going to step up right away. And those are the best ones, right? Like I'm not, I'm not saying that that will happen with every woman. Um, if it was that easy, there'd be probably a lot fewer people in my academy program, right? The, but the best is when a woman makes her shifts and the man steps up right away. The ch it's more challenging when either the woman is really struggling with her own shifts and maybe she gets some of the words right, but the energy is still totally off. That happens. And then a woman's going to need a lot more support to make those shifts. Or she's too scared to make the shifts to begin with because this stuff can be terrorized. Uh, ter ter terrifying. That's the word. <laughs> terrifying for a lot of women. Um and the other thing that can happen is that women do apply these shifts and do, they do a great job, but the man doesn't reflect because his instincts are too suppressed. What can actually happen is the woman, the man starts mirroring the woman in a way where it's like she becomes more permissive and vulnerable. And then he starts being vulnerable and sharing all his feelings and asking permission too. That's a really big issue as well. And of course, we address that. There's ways to, you know, when these problems come up, when it doesn't go as smoothly as it ideally should, it's not the end of the world, okay? And it doesn't mean that the communication doesn't work. It just means you need more support to understand how to navigate these situations with feminine communication so that a man starts to get it and starts shifting, uh, actually starts shifting. And over time, for the vast majority of men, his instincts will start to come online more and more because the more that a woman becomes feminine, the more that those deep buried masculine instincts will come out because it's just like, oh, my God, I want to take care of this woman. She's just so radiant. She's so vulnerable. I want to take care of her. I want to protect her heart right? in a way that he, he never felt before. This is what happened with me. Now, it, sorry, in a different way. I mean, if my wife had applied all the stuff that we that, that I that we teach in our master class in our academy program, my instincts probably would have been activated from the get-go because they were already somewhat online uh, when I first met her, but they weren't fully online. What activated them for me was my son being born and that, that instinct of like, oh my God, I want to protect this beautiful, innocent little boy um, and, and, and step up as that leader. But for a lot of men, it's just not going to happen that way. It's not going to happen that way, but a woman can activate it. Just like, you know, if you're a woman and you've, you know, that first time, say you're, if you've been a masculinized woman, or I mean, you could be any woman, you've experienced this for the first time where it's like, you've been dealing with all these wet noodle men, can't feel their spine, can't feel uh, that energetic penetration. They're just, they're, they're wet. They're, they're wet noodles. And then you meet that really dominant man, just like, you can he's just penetrating you right to your heart right to your core and you can feel his strength you can feel his backbone you can feel his warmth and even women who are like fe like hardcore feminists not all of them because some are just too too far gone but some of them are gonna be like oh my god like what's going on in my body why do i like this man why am I attracted to this man when I hate him at the same time? Because he's going against all of my beliefs, but he's turning me on and I hate it. <laughs> right? What's going on? Her, her instincts are getting activated in a way that they hadn't been activated before. And the same thing happens in the reverse when women learn feminine communication. My instinct was to send a message with the word terrorizing to help you. Yeah, there you go. Right? <laughs> so when a man struggles, it's that, uh, it's that instinct in a woman to like want the, the 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 instinct the mothering instinct to want to take care of him to want to help him and of course it's going to come out with a man you know even with me when i can fully handle my own problems even when it's not you know when i need a moment you notice how it comes out well it's a hundred times worse when you're with a man who can't solve his own problems who's not empowered in that way that so many women get stuck with but you don't have to get stuck with you're only stuck with it if you do nothing. If you if you don't actually take action to make these shifts, if you don't actually learn this content, if you don't actually join the masterclass, if you don't actually make that decision that I can do something about this. 
because you 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 stay living in that disempowerment that like oh there's nothing that can change i i am the way that i am my man's the way that he is men out there they're all modern and they're not you know i'm never going to be uh, be able to attract a masculine man they don't exist blah 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 all those victim stories yeah you're never going to make any shifts to be better to get what you actually want in your relationship but you could okay and this is the end message for everybody you could you can have that dream relationship. You can have that polarity. You can have that literally never ending honeymoon where you're being fully taken care of as a woman or for any women or for any men that are watching this, you're getting that full respect uh, as a man. You're getting that full trust. You got a woman who's submissive and, and wants to follow your lead. You know, and as a woman, you can have that man who you can just feel like you're so safe to let go just so easy to let go because he's just so strong and powerful and wants to take care of you right you can create that you can have that whether you're single right now or in a relationship but you've got to choose that you're going to do something about it that you're not just going to remain passive you're going to actually take action and learn what you need to know and then you're actually going to apply it and if you haven't been to our master class yet that starts with our master class okay go to polaritymasterclass.com sign up and then you're going to get the most amazing two-hour experience of your life that's going to blow your mind our next one is in a week less than a week don't procrastinate don't miss the next one go to polaritymasterclass.com and i will see you there and let's start taking that really big step forward to change your life that's it for this one